that out in your introduction that you've done debates and that you're also a teacher, right? You're a professor or what's, uh, can you kind of explain a little bit uh, about that since I've left that out of your uh, intro? Well, I'm a professor at the University of Philosophy and what is philosophy? What is that? It is sorcery with words. It's a word salad. Of course. Um, I just, uh, I just make everything really confusing so mm -hmm. that nobody can understand what I'm saying and then just sound smart doing it. Right. Big, big and words to obfuscate. And me for it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's total. You know, I learned these cons when I was early on um, in my hobo days when I was jumping, Hop trains. Know, riding trains. And it just Amen, dawned brother. on me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I'm all Anyways, about that. Yeah, I, I teach... You know, I I teach here in Montana uh, at Carroll College, which is a small uh, Roman Catholic liberal arts called Oh, Ecumenist. Mm. God, we get ex Father Deacon and Nice exposed. <laughs> um, anyways, they're really great, they're very supportive of orthodoxy, mm. and um, you know, we've even had students convert. Um, Glory that God have. somehow can use me through that. So that's great. Yeah. Um, that's the good ecumenism, by the way. Um, yeah. Is if, if you're converting people. So that's basically what I do for a secular job. Um, I mm -hmm. serve in the Serbian uh, church in Butte, Montana, Holy Trinity. Um, but yeah, I was involved in apologetics and argue with people since I was five years old. No, uh, about 18. And very interestingly, I was involved in groups that their apologetic method was, excuse me, presuppositionalism. And that's where I learned tag. Interesting enough though, these people were the so anti-Calvinists. Okay. Which is strange because usually you hear about presuppositionalism and transcendental arguments in the Calvinist group. Right. Well, I learned these arguments from people that um, were adamantly against Calvinism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had groups like philosophy groups every week and all kinds of different people, atheists, different religions. Right. And I was very intimidated at first. And you get used to it. It just becomes, you just practice over and over again. And I'd go onto campuses and debate people and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, um, much like the, the YouTube thing, like you mentioned, you know, when it's starting out, like, oh, how am I going to fill up like an hour with talking? You know, and then the more you do it, it just becomes like second nature. It, exactly. I didn't and it really helps if you're like a, a, a raging narcissist, love to hear yourself talk like me. You know, it's just like, I just go, keep going. I can just keep going for three hours straight and never get tired of it. <laughs> But uh, no, we, I brought you on today because uh, I wanted to discuss ecumenism. I just did a, a, a stream on it the other day where I went through some of the patristic faith articles uh, that uh, Father Zachariah Lynch wrote. And then yeah. also um, Father John Whiteford also uh, did that massive four-part article all on the birth. Wasn't of that great? Oh, it's so good. We got through part one, and then I got to do a part two stream where I cover the last three parts of that one. And uh, I think we, wa we watched the uh, video on the Abrahamic family house. You know, that, that Abu Dhabi center, the three. Oh, dude, I got to tell you a great joke, dude. Yeah. I love arguing on Twitter, especially during Lent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Forgive right. me. If anybody's seen you on Twitter, forgive me. Um, but we had this recent, and this kind of ties into kind of ecumenism and stuff like this, but, mm -hmm. uh, there was the recent news about uh, Father Herman from S who was at St. Vlad's when I was there. I remember yeah. him. Um, I think he was then since then, because I was at St. Vlad's from 2013 to 2016. Since then, I think he went to uh, St. Ticon's. Mm. And the news that came out yesterday, if you saw, I posted that he apostatized to uh, the Roman Catholic Church. Oh no. He left orthodoxy. And I didn't know if that was actually true at the time. And you know, I was asking people, and unfortunately it was confirmed. Um, and we've seen this kind of happen and stuff like that. So yeah, 
you know, obviously we're upset. Apostasy is not, it's a very terrible sin. Mm-hmm. And he's defrocked. <laughs> like he loses his, his priesthood. He was. Yeah. Um, and so I pray for him and it's upsetting. And then, of course, uh, some Roman Catholic priest comes on and says, uh, oh, well, he's not leaving Eastern Orthodoxy. There's room for Orthodoxy to live in Roman Catholicism. So I made a joke. I'm like, well, considering um, that, you know, you're bringing Pachi Mama and now have an Abrahamic family house and letting the Quran being read in the Vatican and the Pope consecrating uh, Mormon temples. Sure, gay and, marriage and all that stuff. You know? And uh, praying with uh, pagans on a ziggurat. And um, is it any surprise that you would think that there's room for Orthodox too? Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Just, just come and, you know, just commune with the Pope and it's all good, man. It's all yeah. good. Doesn't really matter what you think. Yeah, I mean, this is just the the, the spirit of ecumenism, which really, I mean, is the main topic for tonight. I mean, I got a a video to pull up. You had actually brought up in uh, when we were talking about doing this show, uh, Asbury revival, and I had no idea what that was. I was like, I, okay, I'll look that, I'll look it up. So I went, and I looked it up, and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh boy, this is literally the religion of the future. Like this is, you know, I was talking to uh, the one guy in our in the chat, uh, John Connor, and he had mentioned that, and I was like, that is so true. It, it is literally the religion of the future that Father Seraphim Rose talks about in in Orthodoxy and the religion of the future.